Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Sunday Coffee. Yeah, this is a pre-recorded episode, by the way. So for everybody out there who is waiting for the live show, uh, I'm going to be doing some pre-recorded episodes of Sunday Coffee and putting up for you guys. But this is the show where I read every single one of your comments every single week. And for those of you who have left your comments this week, I hope that you guys enjoy. Like I said, it's going to be a little bit different, uh, but my time management has been a little off lately and I'm just not able to stream at the normal times on Sundays. So hopefully you guys don't mind this as a way to still can I come leave your comments throughout the week. Definitely make fun of me. I will absolutely react to that uh, because I love seeing what you guys have to say. And without any further ado, let's get over into some of your comments here. Uh, as you may notice, I don't have uh, my background because, well, my my computer is actually not alive right now so uh tech support's gonna help me out with that and hopefully we get some warranty work going but all right i got some comments pulled up from last week's sunday coffee so let's get into this i'm also trying to be somewhat quiet because my wife is asleep <laughs> all right here we go uh, all right over here why is that screen so messed up now that's that makes no sense that screen should not be that messed up all right <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is, I, th guys, it's going to be a few fun weeks until I get my computer back, okay? All right. So, Creative Welshman over here on last week's Sunday Coffee. This was uh, talking about, uh, oh, mostly just the that one guy that got arrested at that, uh, that event. Uh, but he says, first to say that internet drama is pointless. Uh, it's all he said, she said, and I ain't got time for that nonsense. Um, you know, a lot of people, <laughs> funny enough, funny enough, a lot of people say that they don't have time for the nonsense, right? We don't have time for the internet drama nonsense, but a lot of people make time for it. It's interesting because I see a lot of people that are like, I don't want to be involved in the drama. All the drama is pointless. And then you open up Twitter every day and the same people that are saying they don't want to be involved in it are constantly sniping at people, constantly saying things to people right just because they can and it's like well if you're not interested in the drama and i'm not saying creative welshman does this i just but I've, I've seen it you know and that's one of the interesting things is like well everybody says they're not into the drama but really like are you really not like mm, i don't know um chat sue says i do need and plan to start finding places to advertise my stuff i'm currently trying to figure out uh a solid strategy instead of my current method of just throwing crap at the wall and seeing what sticks. Um, I mean, in the beginning, dude, that's one of those things, especially as a creator, when it comes to figuring out like marketing and stuff like that. I know there are like a bunch of people out there, and I'm even talking with people behind the scenes um, about this stuff, too. But it's like, OK, so I want to identify a problem, which is for you as a creator writing books, it would be, I want these kind of stories and I'm not seeing them. So that's the problem. The solution is, okay, other people probably would like to have these stories too. Now that you know the solution, it's how do you get it into people's hands? And marketing is a totally different thing. Like I, dude, if I was a whiz at marketing, we'd be talking a very, very different story right now. Like the channel would be growing, um, but alas, it is what it is. It is what it is, but yeah. Um, okay, it turns, it turns out the walls are made of Teflon. Who knew? Walls are made of drywall <laughs> or sometimes steel or sometimes also concrete. I've never actually seen a Teflon wall. I was going to make a joke there that I should not make. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> okay. Oh, boy. Well, I'm confident in what I'm creating with the uh, trilateral realms. It's also hard to advertise due to the wildly different tones and target demographics for each story. For example, Midnight Falls is a young adult horror mystery series, while my next book will be the start of a pulp fantasy series with a dash of spaghetti western oh wow oh that would be really hard to um oh that ooh i didn't realize you were yeah that that would be tough to market man um i think my 
best bet is to just focus each series on the demographic that will like them the best and hope some of them enjoy what they read enough to take a chance on the other series. Um, y yeah, I mean, there are there are writers out there who have been able to pull that off. Um, very few, though. Uh, but there are writers out there who can pull that off, but that, that would be very, very hard. I mean, think of it this way. That's it's it's similar like. So think of it this way. It, if you look at it in terms of like a YouTube channel, right, which is kind of why I'm adjusting and kind of changing what I do, because I was doing like way too much on the YouTube channel, right? Way too much uh, to covering too many uh, different. No, I don't want your experimental AI features. No, thank you. Google's like, would you like uh, our AI to uh, probe you? No, you can keep your AI probes away from me. Thank you. Um, but as a YouTube channel, it's a lot harder for channels to grow who talk about like multiple, multiple different topics. The channels that I've seen do it successfully, what they'll do is they'll talk about like one thing for a long time. And then they kind of toss videos out there that are like about different interests that they have. And then they kind of move their audience over into this other thing that they like. They'll go from like creepy pasta stuff into like conspiracy theory stuff and then uh, further on into um, uh, uh, different things like that. So that could be another option is you kind of write a certain way and then maybe you have a book that kind of transitions people into like the pulp stuff if that's what you want to do to like round out your storytelling or I'm not I'm not sure. But there are a few different ways to attack that problem. But yeah, I see what your your issue is there, Chatsu. Uh, the next book will definitely appeal to more uh, more to the Iron Age crowd than what I've written so far. Any strategy I come up with will likely require some amount of money. Uh, so I'm working on getting that situation resolved. May take a while. In the meantime, I've got writing to get back to. You know what? Good luck, Chatsu. I, no, and I think I, I think you got a good idea. And like I said, this stuff is kind of tough. <laughs> like, it's not... There's no magic bullet for marketing, man. There's no magic bullet for... I mean, there are principles and things that you can use. Things that you can apply. But there is also such a thing as, like, time and place. And if you don't hit that time and place correctly... It, that can also be a thing too. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't find the time and the place either. But like I said, all this stuff, it's, it's, <laughs> that really doesn't tell you anything, right? It's like when people are like, well, what you need to do is, you know, you need to know how to identify the trends and then set yourself in front of those trends before they hit. And then when they hit, you can, and like, that's a lot easier said than done. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, and, and Chad and like I said, I was just trying to give you some ideas of of just kind of where to put your put your stuff, so maybe you can get some more readers and more people attracted to what you're doing. So, um, all right, we got comments over here from Iron Age Nights on Friday, which was an absolute disaster of a show. I mean, the show was actually really fun, uh, but with all of the technology problems between myself and Evely Music, and then. Um, our guest had to cancel because of medical emergency stuff and like, or not, not the guest themselves, but the family member, like it was, it was crazy. So, all right. Okay. Pritchard's pub or wait, no, no, not Pritchard's pub. I'm sorry. Uh, David Conway. DCC as he is called. Um, this was awesome hearing from Daniel about G Sedai. I uh, do read books, but I'm glad Daniel did a comic version of G Sedai. Um, I do miss not saying King Richard, but Justin, Everly Music, is a good host. It's always good seeing Rose, the lady of the main man. Uh, Y'all knocked, knocked in out of the park, main man. Oh, thanks. Yeah, so we, um, yeah, that was, uh, yeah, that was uh, funny because, well, I needed to get up, dude. I was tired. I had to get up and go stand up like, and, and just chill for a sec, stretch my legs, not fall asleep while we were streaming. So I was like, hey, babe, just 
come here and sit. And so I had my wife uh, tag in for me because, uh, yeah, when you wake up at four o'clock in the morning. Funny enough, I say that, but I actually woke up at three thirty <laughs> this morning. So, yeah, I just would when it's just on, like you can't turn it off. So yeah, that's just uh, that's where it's at. So, all right, um, let's see, Pritchard Pubs orcs aren't gay daniel they aren't gay at all orcs have been i don't like most modern interpretations of them um i i i think tolkien's interpretation was probably the best uh they were you know elves that were mutilated and tortured and like returned to life and all that so yes um i don't mind having creatures that are just evil for because they were made from evil the modern interpretation of orcs where like we're, we're slowly even in our even in our spheres like we're slowly just getting ri rid of just bad guys right because every bad guy has to have some some form of nuance and like oh no like an orc isn't a being made from a from fr from a malicious demonic force out in the universe no it's just a different race of people and i'm like okay but like it doesn't have to be you can just it's like like you like dude it's it <sighs> I was listening to a podcast a few weeks back and like people are getting so stupid with this. They're like, if zombies were real, there would be college students protesting for like zombies to have rights and they should be able to vote because they need to eat our brain. Like it's that dumb. Like, like it's getting to the point. Like I'm surprised nobody's made that like with the walking dead. Like it's obviously taking things too far. I think I don't like the modern interpretation of orcs, even in what we're doing here. Like, can we just have like monsters in, in, in the stories again, please? That would be, that would be wonderful. That would be one. I know, I know that I know Johnny Douglas is going to be down in the chat, but like, how, how dare you with the orcs and orcs are great and orcs. No, they're not. They're not, they're not even orcs anymore. They're, they're, they're just people. They're just, they're just, they're just different type of people now. They're not even, they're not even orcs anymore at all. So that's where I'm at. But yeah, um, I, I will agree that, uh, modern, modern orcs are gay. Oh, God. Mm. Oh, hey, by the way, guys, go check out the Teespring shop down in the description. You guys check that out because I got new shirts and I'm very excited for the new shirts. OK, let's see if this is going to work on this page. The cool thing is, is we didn't have a whole lot of comments this week either. So I'm actually able to get through all of this rather quickly, which I kind of like. Um, and... <laughs> Like I said, for those of you who are used to this being live streamed, you come and you horse around with me. I love it. Absolutely leave your comments. Make sure that you <laughs> make sure that you stop by every week. Like I said, it's gonna be like it's gonna be like this for a while. I may I may live stream Sunday coffee once in a while, depending on what my schedule looks like during the day. But um yeah, that, that time slot at like eleven o'clock. It just it's tough, guys. It's tough. So I'm recording this, it's like 6 30 in the morning um but i just i i didn't want to give this up and like i said now it's just one of those things where you guys drop your comments and leave your your snarkiness uh in the comments that i have to go read uh instead of just being right in the chat which again a little bit of an inconvenience i'm sorry guys so making all these changes i'm i am slowly but surely scaring away my audience because i'm like guys i'm gonna make changes for the better and then everybody's like but why <laughs> death by a thousand bad decisions all right let's go here so i also did uh this is a uh uh a video on the incredibles too so there were some memes going uh going around uh twitter or x or uh, elon's place uh a few weeks back and it was that scene um where they were like you know politicians don't care about what's right they you know they uh Oh, God, what was the phrase? Anyway, you guys, anyway, so they were sharing that, and people were like, man, The Incredibles went hard. And a lot of people, got, I didn't realize that there, a lot of people didn't like The Incredibles too, which is which is weird. And because I love that movie. I think it's great. And a lot of people, uh, and I was like, you know what? Why do I like it, and what are people's problems with it? And I realized that I keyed into 
The entire reason that I like that movie is be it has nothing to do with everything that people complain about. Because I'm like, yeah, okay, those stuffs were cool, but like none of that matters. I actually just cared about seeing a good, healthy family in a movie, like a good father figure, a good male role model, a good female role model, you know, children who aren't angsty little brats like i i really enjoy that <laughs> i thought that was kind of cool and uh, apparently everybody else um who begs for good you know family movies where the families are really um are uh, unless you have a tolkien level plot or you have you know uh, uh or 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 you have you know like a star wars level bad guy it, you know it, it it's a bad movie that's basically what I've gotten is that people are like the plot wasn't strong enough and the bad guy wasn't strong enough. I'm like, yeah, but neither of those were the point of the movie. And I and these are front and I've actually had conversations with people where like um, we've talked about books and things like that and people have missed certain things in books. I'm like, but the writer put that in there. And they're like, oh, yeah, I just I didn't even care about that. I'm like, but what? I'm like, that's that's weird. Like, you're going to just skip over that detail. But then when somebody says, oh, the primary purpose of this movie is the family, you're going to hone in on everything but that detail and you're going to leave that one out. It's, it's, it's just weird the way that some people grade things. And I guess everybody grades it because I mean, I, I, I do it, too. Like I said, I graded this movie based off of how I thought the family functioned in the movie. And that makes the movie good. And that's the only thing that I cared about. And then obviously the Jack Jack fight and then the Jack Jack with Edna Mode was hilarious. I love that. Like there were some solid moments in there. Uh, but anyway, all right, let's get to your comments about The Incredibles 2, which you guys are all wrong about. All right, The Incredibles 2. Uh, Stop Madness says Incredibles. Yes, corrects me. Apparently, when I originally posted this video, uh, I misspelled Incredibles. Because for some reason, Google just doesn't like to let me know when I misspell things. Because I forgot to hit a letter. So thank you, Mike S. Badness. I appreciate you. Uh, fearless leader over here. He says, I disagree in the first scene uh, with the divorce pitch to Elastigirl. They had to imply Mr. Credible was arrogant at best and a chauvinist at worst. Uh, he should have been neither. Uh, he should have been neither at the end of The Incredibles. Uh, she's good, really. A credit to her, you know, you know. With her glaring at him. Um, a lot of mentions of a man's world and all that. And how Evelyn said the Underminer incident would have gone better. So, yeah, I know the scene that you're talking about. The funny thing is, too. You mentioned Evelyn here. The villain of the movie? I don't, I don't know if you guys caught this. But in The Incredibles 2, the raging feminist is the villain. And her ideals are put on blast throughout the movie. I don't I, like I just I nobody talks about that. Everybody talks about how it's this rah rah girl power thing. But nobody talks about how they actually made the feminine villain in the movie. She wasn't sympathetic at all in any way. She was obnoxious and she was written that way because Apparently, there's a side to femininity, there's a side to feminism that's obnoxious and annoying, and they displayed that, and that character was the villain, and that character got arrested at the end of the movie. So when you're telling me that the villain is being displayed obnoxiously, and every time people like the man's world thing, it's basically written off, even by Elastigirl when she says it to her later, Right. And if you remember how the first movie played out, do you remember the amount of lawsuits like in the first movie that were against Mr. Incredible that started the whole the dude who he saved like he broke his neck because the guy wanted to jump off of a building and he broke, you know, and Mr. Incredible saved him. Then there was the train incident. Then there was all this other stuff. All of these other items that they said that Mr. Incredible was causing too much damage that caused public outcry. They sued the federal government. So yes, naturally, the thing to do would be send the guy who caused all these lawsuits in the first movie out 
to break more stuff to then solidify public. Did you did you watch the first movie? Because that whole scene that you're talking about here is about how Mr. Incredible caused a lot. He, yes, he saved a lot of people, but he also caused a lot of damage. And the public doesn't like it when their shit gets broken. Like if, uh, but th this is the nitpicky stuff. People are like, oh, it's, a, it's such a girl power. It's so feminist. They talk so bad about Mr. Incredible because, and they made the raging feminist bitch the villain, and then arrested her, and then made her obnoxious and annoying the whole movie. <laughs> but let's not talk about that, right? Let's talk about your point because your point totally makes more sense. <laughs> Sorry, fearless leader. I just no, uh, it, no. You, you you glossed over so many so many different points. Maybe because I actually watched the movies recently to make this video. But yeah, no. There's so many different callbacks and there's so much information that Brad Bird did that he carried over from the first movie, and nobody talks about that, right? Uh, incident would have gone better if a last girl alone. Uh, handled it. I mean, I think Elastigirl would have handled it differently if her kids weren't there. So, uh, in a role reversal plot, both characters should be struggling, but instead, Bob struggles a lot uh, and learns to adapt. Helen should be struggling more than she is. We get three scenes when she doubts her choice, uh, and she's flying high the rest of the time. The plot handles her with kid gloves. <clears throat> no. I don't really think it does. I mean, I don't really think it does. I mean, look at the first movie. Look at the first movie. I mean, Mr. Incredible went out for that first movie and did what? He dominated everything up until the very, very, very end when the villain reveal happened. Like, he, he, they did the same thing with Elastigirl in this movie up until she gets captured and the decision and then it's like oh she you know she's now captured she screwed up now she is the plot device being used to capture her family and her friends but let's let's not think about the first movie where mr incredible literally for most of the movie was shown just punching stuff gloriously and making all of the right decisions and beating up those robots on on that island let's Let's forget how, you know, up until the actual plot has to do its reveal, like, they treated Mr. Incredible the same way in the first movie. But, you know, let, yeah, let's not, let's, let's not talk about that. <laughs> this is the stuff that I love. God, I love it when people use half arguments. Uh, Garham says, on found family. I think the trope is more commonly used where the characters have lost their birth family. Um, classically, yes, but uh, in more modern terms, like the orphan, right? The orphan wanderer um, is a is a good one. Um, uh, like you know, Batman would be a he'd be like a found family because he you know his parents got Hillary Clinton, and anyway, um, so. <laughs> That's the real story. Anyway. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, I haven't seen any instances where the characters uh, reject their birth family in favor of found family. Not saying it doesn't happen. Oh, dude, it's all over modern media. Like, it's all over uh, modern media. Like, so much of it is over modern media, right? Not saying it doesn't happen, but that would be an example of a trope done poorly. Yes. Uh, Ranger Steadfast. Uh, I saw the woke elements there. <sighs> you. But it didn't feel I was being preached to. Okay. <laughs> Dude, this is, I, uh, do people know what woke means anymore? That, like, do I have to explain it again? Okay. It's a Marxist principle where they basically say that society has transgressed upon me therefore society needs to pay me money right whether you're poor or pick a color or pick a uh you know pick a, a sexuality or whatever you, you can come up with some weird thing to say that you're oppressed and again 
the one the villain of the movie displayed that and then got arrested because they were the villain i <laughs> i mean when was the last time we saw the raging feminist as the villain and then she gets thrown in jail and you don't sympathize with her you think she's annoying and you want her to get arrested like she wasn't even a sympathetic feminist villain I, 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 again, this is just another, the, the term woke has been used so much, most people have no idea what it means anymore. I, I think a lot of people think it just means, oh, anything, anything that puts any sort of female front and center at all, period, is woke. That, it, no, that's not, because, again, and this is why we've diluted, the word has been used so much, it's why I don't use it in my titles and stuff like that. It's, people have diluted it so much, it's why the left is saying, oh, if this character was made today, they'd call it woke because no, and not only that, but nobody can properly defend it either. You ask anybody what woke is, most people can't tell you what it is. Most people can't. Okay. It's Marxist ideology, and then they've injected gender and race uh, theory into it. That's what it is. Right. All right. And then you obviously have, uh, you know, the postmodernist uh, philosophy, which goes hand in hand with it. Right. That's what, that's what woke is. But like, nobody can explain it. And that's that's what I don't understand. So um, it really did feel like the Incredibles in modern times, uh, although they technically aren't. I know I found it entertaining and amusing. Also, uh, really great to see cool new anti-defamation water closet. Huh? I don't. I don't know what that last one is. Do you have new merch? I have no idea what that last sentence is about. Hmm. Okay, thank you, Ranger Steadfast. <laughs> I have no idea what that's about. All right. Uh, author John A. Douglas. So I'm starting to regret this whole idea of freedom of speech. Yeah, you're really going to regret that when when you hear my comments about orcs and how they're not even orcs anymore. They're just people at this point. <sighs> Everybody's got to humanize the monster, including that guy. He writes about orcs. He thinks orcs. Hey, <laughs> John A. Douglas thinks orcs are people too. <laughs> oh... Uh, AOG uh, Poston says, uh, you're exactly right. Best movie about a family in a long time. I love The Incredibles too. Uh, it was a great story to me. Predictable, sure, but it's a Pixar movie, not a Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, well, and a lot of people have said like the first movie had such a great villain reveal because it was again, I'm like, yeah, it was a better villain reveal. Like it, for sure. I mean, and it, and it makes sense, right? Um, what was weird though, like superheroes were already illegal and this guy wanted to give people like everybody the superpowers which that's one thing i've always thought about i'm like well syndrome so he wants to build this technology and put it out into the general public but superheroing was illegal and he wanted to go out and act as a superhero but superheroing was illegal so they yeah, still would have arrested him like, I don't know, that was just, that was just this, obviously, villains have flawed logic. Like, but, you know, I mean, maybe if he would have garnered the public support, I guess if Syndrome was going to do that. So, you know, kind of similar to, I guess, what, but I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. Very strange. I, it's just something I've always thought about in the first movie. I was like, that's kind of weird. Um, Sorry for the long comment, Royce. Holy crap, dude. Um, okay. I'm going to see where we get to in this comment. I might not read all of that, dude. That is, I'll, I'll read enough of it to get the gist of it. Uh, that's, that's a, that's a bit ridiculous, dude. Like, that's a lot ridiculous. Holy crap. <laughs> um, 
All right, uh, I think this movie needed to come out back around 2007 when the first movie was still fresh in our minds. I think a lot of people felt like that, but that was a different time period. I mean, you got to think like 2000 what was this 2004 when the first one came out. Uh, there'd only been a few Pixar movies at that time, I believe, being I think Toy Story um, was one of them that had done the sequel thing. Not only that, but the superhero genre was still like really all we had was the Sam Raimi Spider-Man and a couple of X-Men movies at that time. I think we were getting into things like Smallville and Arrow for sure. So it was on the it was ramping up. But I know I remember hearing Brad Bird talk about this. And on top of just, you know, not quite knowing how he wanted to piece the story together. He was like, you know, it's just a different time back then. So I, I tend to agree, though. Yeah, it probably would have made more sense for it to come out earlier. Um, But I don't know. I, I think that the technology that we had available when it came out now, like totally different. I mean, that movie looks so good compared to the first one. It's freaking great. Um, But yeah, so. OK, over the years. Uh, people have developed an idea of what they thought the sequel should have been and were uh, disappointed as a result after seeing the sequel over a decade later. Um, I could, yeah, I could see, I can see how some people could do that. I feel I, is that, yeah, I guess if people were kind of let down by it, I mean, I didn't. I wasn't, but again, and that's kind of why I'm on the opposite side of this, playing Devil's Advocate. Okay, that and some fans were upset. Uh, the game Incredibles 2 Rise of the Underminer was removed from canon. Did Brad Bird ever say that it was in canon? I keep hearing people say this, but I've never seen um, anything from Brad Bird saying that the Underminer game was canon to the universe. Um, not only that, when you hear Brad Bird talk, he's not that type of, he doesn't really seem to be like that type of person. But if you guys would find that for me, that would be fantastic. But everybody keeps saying that, well, not everybody, but there is a small contingent of people who I've seen talk about this, saying that Brad Bird said that, or, or that, you know, the rise of the Underminer was like canon to the movies. But did Brad Bird ever say that? How did I, did I phrase that? Did Brad Bird ever say that that game was canon to the movies? that it was the sequel follow-up? Like, like, did he say that? Because if he didn't say that, then it wasn't canon. Like, you know, from the mouth of God type situation. If the writer of the movie and the creator of the movie says, yes, it's canon, absolutely. If somebody else was like, yeah, no, this is totally, uh, like the writer of the movie, the guy who created it didn't say, it. it's like, you know, that that that's kind of where you get into the, like, if the guy who created it says, yes, it's a go, then it's a go. I mean, a lot of people may not like everything that George Lucas greenlit to come in and be written into his universe, but at the end of the day, he signed off on it and said, yes, this is canon to my universe. There was a lot of garbage in there, but George Lucas flat out said, yes, these stories are canon to the universe, right? Um, so, again, if it had Brad Bird's stamp on it, I'd go with it, uh, which up until that point served as the only official continuation of the story. The plot isn't the issue, but the timing of the movie release and how the sequel game was ignored are, in my opinion, the real reason people hate the movie. If people thought that that game was canon and it actually wasn't, then uh, that that's on the people like that's people just making crap up in their head. I'm, and people will do that all the time. Again, I need to see a source from you guys, if you would please, where it says Brad Bird says this game was canon, right? I might look it up after after I get done recording this. Okay, uh, now for the hypothetical third movie. Uh, Brad Bird said he didn't want to do another one. However, from what I have heard, I've heard rumblings that Disney Pixar wants to try to make one. We don't know if Brad Bird's going to be involved. Um, I'm going to stop you right there. The hypothetical third movie should never exist. Right? Not in today's day and age. Not only that, I'm getting tired of sequels and prequels and stuff like that. Like back in 2018, I wasn't really as tired of them. Um, but 
as time goes on and as storytelling is just not what it once was, I am getting more and more sick of sequels and re-releases and redos and re-edits. So as far as like the hypothetical third movie, I don't even want to talk about that because it doesn't need to exist. It just doesn't. Right. Um, uh, it's about the family being dragged into a court battle over their right to be a superhero and save the people. They already wrapped that up in the second movie, though. Like, the UN got together and signed a piece of paper saying that heroes were legal again. Like, the United Nations signed an accord saying that heroes were legal again. So, the why would the family get dragged into court? That directly contradicts the end of the second movie. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Um, man, and then you go on a very, very long... Okay, so if people want to read this, go check this out. Um, but yeah, basically, he's just doing a pitch for like what the third movie should be. Uh, cliffhanger, and no, I won't say how it goes in the hypothetical Incredibles 4. And again, and so now you're asking for a, a fourth movie. No, we need to just stop. We need to just stop. But yeah, so you guys can go read this. I haven't read any of this yet, but I, again, starting off with a plot hole like that, Creative Welshman, is not good. Like, they already, they literally signed it. The UN signed a thing saying that heroes were legal at the end of the second movie. So, no. And then, but yeah. Um, but that that's a really long comment. Not talking about Incredibles 2. If you were talking about Incredibles 2 here, I would probably read it, but you're going on a tangent about a hypothetical third movie that doesn't exist and probably shouldn't exist, to be honest. So, but it, I mean, I, I appreciate what you said about the second movie, but uh, yeah, as far as like reading about the third movie and the hypotheticals there, I'm not, I'm, I'll, I'll cut you off there, but I do, if anybody else wants to read this, go check out the video and read Creative Welshman's thoughts because maybe you guys want to, maybe you guys want an Incredibles 3 and maybe you think he's got some good ideas there, so. Um, but dude, I do appreciate you doing that. Thank you for, for typing all of that out. That's just, that's a lot to read, especially when it's a little off topic for, you know, for the video that I did. Um, Lord Simon, <clears throat> uh, says the Incredibles 2, uh, was a solid sequel. Oh, you know what did I do? Yes, I did newest first. Okay. So Incredibles 2 is a solid sequel to the first. I never saw Mr. Incredible as being sidelined. His role was just as important as the last girl and it was some excellent character development for him. See, I thought the same thing as well. And apparently a lot of other people didn't see that. Um, so, yeah. No, I agree, Lord Simon. No, I really like that. But again, the family element, I like that it was a movie about a family and they nailed that part. And I like that. So the main point that Brad Bird wanted to get across, he nails and is i mean that being said if i grade the movie based off of the family dynamic and other people go in and they grade the movie based off of the villain dynamic who's really right there like that 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 is where you get into the agree to disagree type situation because people can go in and say because somebody can go and they can watch a movie and somebody can say i liked the plot of the movie and somebody could say i didn't like the cinematography of the movie and they're grading it on two totally different scales. And one person's like, that's dumb. The plot was really good. Ergo, good movie. And they're like, that's dumb. The cinematography wasn't good. Ergo, bad movie. It, it, you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. So it's tough to say, because again, I grade this off of the, the family dynamic, which I thought was fantastic. And, and that was enough to slide the scales for me away from the predictable plot and, you know, the raging feminist villain that got thrown in jail, by the way. I just just so everybody knows that, just so everybody's aware, the feminist in Incredibles 2 went to jail. <laughs> All right, uh, random JD. Uh, I like the movie. Really relatable moment here and there. Uh, I am I am Dash in the movie when I was a kid. Okay, so he's saying that he he's similar in uh, personality to Dash when he was getting... Uh, I can't compare it to the first movie due to uh, it being more a spy family superhero movie. 
and you can tell from the quantity of videos around YouTube that it's more valuable than the sequel. I like The Incredibles 2, uh, but I can't put myself to love it. Uh, it tried to be something unique, relatable, lovable, and more into the drama of the family. And I just think if it was all about the family, it could be better, but they needed uh, the villain plot. Uh, it could be better to re it could be better to recreate the original movie to develop the superhero trope in a family perspective, but they needed to be more human and relatable for it to be just okay. So if I'm to understand you, I mean, it's a cartoon. It, it, it is a cartoon movie. Some people might get, yeah, but like cartoons have always had over the top like characters and caricatures. Like that's what, that's what it is. So I don't know. See, I, I mean, I, I feel like you're trying to grade it based on something that wasn't there. Maybe I'm wrong. Right? It's like the expectation that it, a, a kid's movie, especially because that's what Brad Bird said, a kid's movie about a family that just so happens to have superpowers. Like, yeah, you're going to have some characters like like what they had to act exactly how people act in the real world. Is that is that what you're saying? I, I, I might be misunderstanding that random Jay. So, um... All right. Andy Radart says the role reversal between husband and wife is a trope from movies. Uh, I watched uh, between husband and wife is a trope from movies I watched in my dim and distant use. And whilst Incredibles 2 does lean into the yay whammon a tiny bit, it's not that egregious. They did have uh, they did have a lot of, you know, a lot of women in the upfront there, right? So, uh, it is, as you say, the strength of a family, much like those old movies. On the movie itself, whilst I kind of enjoyed it when I watched it, I've never bothered since and found it ultimately forgettable. Really? I guess a lot of people... See, and that's the thing. Like, I mean, I guess if... I guess if more people dislike it than enjoy it, then, you know, Brad Bird didn't hit the mark, right? Which, like... If I really like this movie, but and there are people like me that really like this movie or not like me, but like people like this movie a lot, but 51% of people out there don't like this movie or 75% of people who watched it don't like this movie or found it forgettable. Brad Bird didn't hit the mark then, right? If more of the audience doesn't like it than does like it, he didn't hit the mark. Which is, again, that's an argument that I, I I have to secede. Like, it doesn't matter how much you like something individually. The metrics will speak for themselves. I don't know what those metrics are, but... And I don't know if there's a way to find them particularly, but yeah. Uh, Gorilla Mar. I barely remember this movie, to defend my position. Uh, I do remember not liking that we didn't really get a whole family superhero film and how they would manage that. I think that would have distracted too much. Um, because I think people want to lean too much into the superhero thing where Brad Bird wanted to lean into the family thing, right? It's kind of similar to what, um, oh, the guy who created the Joker movie. He was like, he didn't really, he didn't, he didn't want to do a superhero movie. He wanted to tell a story about a, a mentally, you know, a, a, a mentally deranged person uh, in that way. And um, what was it? It was a taxi, taxi driver, taxi. Anyway, he was, I can't remember the name of the movie off the top of my head, taxi something or other, but he was heavily inspired by movies like that. And the thing is, but he was like, but the only way to get a made, to get a movie made today is to put superheroes around it, right? Right. Now, this just so happened to be Brad Bird's follow up to the first movie, which a lot of people were begging for. Um, and the fact of the matter is, is I think people I, I that see and that kind of is the tell for me 
is a lot of people put less importance on family in storytelling and more importance on superheroes in storytelling. Which is which is strange. But maybe I'm I don't know. Could be reading that the wrong way too. Uh Pritchard Pub. Pritchard Pub comes out and he says, incredible. Oh, I'm sorry, she. She says Pritchard Pub. I'm sorry. That's not I remember. Thank you. I can't believe I said. Well, it's both of you though, isn't it? pretty sure it's both it's a husband and wife team that run that channel you guys gotta go check them out dude they do some fantastic shows over there go check them out all right ladies and gentlemen we didn't have a lot of comments this week man we were able to get through that 45 minutes dude i have not been able to get through a sunday coffee in 45 minutes basically since i started live streaming it and now there's going to be some editing work and things like that done to make it a little bit better for you guys you know so that way it's not just boring and sitting here especially because you guys are going to be uh, uh probably <laughs> you guys are uh definitely definitely uh gonna not uh, be able to engage with it because it won't be live but i do appreciate everybody being here thank you guys so much especially there's changes go check out the i support indie creators merch in the link down in the description below if you guys would do that for me that would be absolutely fantastic i would i would love that um I would absolutely love that. I think that <laughs> I think that's one of the best ways to get the conversation started out in the world. So, guys, thank you so much. I'm so sorry. Uh, we'll deal with this setup for just a little bit longer until I get my primary computer fixed. But as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for being here. And until next time, cheers, everybody.